It was one of the strangest cases in Canadian history. A squashed piece of fruit and a tiny pinpoint reflection in a picture was the only evidence. But was it enough to catch a killer? On June 19, 1989, there was a thunderstorm in Collingwood, Ontario. But the rain didn't stop 33-year-old Debbie Timlock from venturing out that night. She was a pretty vivacious woman that loved to ski, and I had a sailboat in the harbor. She liked to sail, and um, she liked people. Debbie, a single mother, left her six-year-old daughter, Lacey, at her parents' home for the night. Debbie and a few of her friends went to a local restaurant where they visited with each other. And it was later in the evening when Debbie and her friends said goodbye to each other in the parking lot. Her friends said Debbie left alone and presumably went straight home. At 3.25 in the morning, however, she phoned police to report she had been attacked. She indicated she had been assaulted. I don't believe she was in total understanding of what had occurred. She was struggling to stay conscious. But by the time police arrived, it was too late. Upon entering uh, Debbie Timlock's bedroom, we noticed uh, blood on the waterbed, blood on different uh, articles of clothing and sheets as well as a comforter that were either on the bed or on the floor. There was also blood stains and some blood spatter on a headboard of the bed. Investigators also found evidence of activity in the kitchen. The kitchen was disheveled. It appeared the entry was through the kitchen window, which was a ground level apartment. There had been some disturbing of dishes and, and that type of thing that had been in the kitchen sink. Outside the kitchen window was an area partially hidden behind some greenery. On the ground, investigators noticed a tomato. Debbie Timlock had a tomato on her windowsill ripening, and the tomato had uh, likely been dragged out onto the ground when the suspect had pulled the blinds out of the window. When we noticed the tomato, it was quite obvious that there was a partial footwear impression on the tomato itself. They photographed the tomato, then put it in Debbie's refrigerator to preserve it. This case ranks among the most unusual in forensic history. It was unique. In fact, to this day, and I've, I've been policing now for 28 years and 20 years in the forensic business, I've never before or never again had an impression in a tomato. 